It has finally happened, something that Kyiv has been waiting for more than a year and a half of Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine. We will have F-16 as a serious part of air defense systems of Ukraine. F-16s will undoubtedly instill fresh confidence and motivation in both our warriors and ordinary citizens. Why does Ukraine need these fighter jets? Will dozens of F-16s that Ukraine is expected to get be enough? And could they be a game changer on the battlefield? My name is Natalia Chakotun, I'm a reporter at the Kyiv Independent, let's talk about it. According to the Air and Space Power Association, for every 15 Ukrainian fighter jets, Russia has 100. Yet it's not only a question of the number of planes. Ukraine's air fleet consists of Soviet fighter jets mainly produced in the 70s, like the MiG-29 or Su-24. Russia uses these too, yet it also has heavily modified aircraft like its K-52 attack helicopters equipped with long-range anti-tank missiles, according to the UK Defense Ministry. The raiders on Ukraine's Soviet fighters simply cannot detect Russian aircraft, says Yuri Ignat, spokesman of Ukraine's Air Force Command. When it comes to semi-active radar-guided missiles, our pilots need to eliminate the target which the missile is flying towards. That means that our pilots find themselves in enemy radar and expose themselves to an incredible risk. Our pilots have no chance against Russia's new Sukhoi fighter jets. In addition, Ukraine's Soviet-era fighter jets are slower and more difficult to maneuver than the new Russian planes. Russians are using just a newer planes, so they are better in all different, in all various characteristics. But the key, the key problem is, of course, the radars and the rockets. So Russians' planes are shooting much longer, and they see several times uh, longer than Ukrainians. But what about F-16s? What advantages do these fighter jets have? The F-16 was designed for the US Air Force. It is a multi-role fighter capable of air-to-air -air and air-to-surface operations. It is highly maneuverable and can travel at a maximum speed of 1,500 miles per hour, more than 2,400 kilometers per hour, according to the US Air Force. For more than a year and a half of Russia's full-scale invasion, Ukraine has been campaigning to get these fighter jets stressing that they are crucial for the country's success on the battlefield. Yet the Biden administration wouldn't approve this request, arguing that the Ukrainian infrastructure wasn't ready for the F-16s and that Ukrainian pilots didn't know how to fly them. Now it has finally happened. President Volodymyr Zelensky announced on the 20th of August that Ukraine would receive 42 fighter jets from the Netherlands and another 19 F-16s are expected from Denmark. On the 24th of August, Norway also announced it would donate some F-16s to Ukraine, yet it hasn't specified the number. It will take from six to seven months for Ukraine to get the F-16s, Ukraine's defense minister Oleksiy Reznikov said on the 22nd of August. Eight Ukrainian pilots and 65 technical and support personnel have already arrived at a military air base in Denmark to receive training from 11 NATO member states, which is expected to last half a year. We agreed with the Netherlands, with Mark Rutte, that we can count on 42 planes. We have no more. We will be training on 18 of them. When we learn to fly, we will be able to get these 18 airplanes. We can get the rest of the jets as soon as our pilots are ready. But will these fighter jets be able to dramatically change the situation on the front line? In order to achieve success on the battlefield, Ukraine needs air superiority, says General James Hacker, top US Air Force commander in Europe. It needs the ability to prevent Russian aircraft from attacking Ukrainian soldiers on the ground. General Hacker argues that if Ukraine had had a more powerful air fleet early on, it could have blunted Russia's invasion. But since this didn't happen, the war has lasted for more than a year and a half and has led to tens of thousands of casualties, including the civilian ones. Ukraine also needs F-16s to protect its airspace from Russia's relentless attacks against urban areas and civilians. 
Shahed attacks and cruise missile attacks continue, unfortunately, and F-16 will not be able to do anything against ballistic missiles. A ballistic missile can only be shot down by Patriot and similar systems, but it can handle cruise missiles, drones and other aircraft. Apart from that, F-16s can take on warships as the armament includes harpoon missiles, says Ignat. Among other things, this may help Ukraine protect its ports and port infrastructure, as well as grain terminals and grain corridors. They can also make a difference in helping Ukraine to liberate its territory. Russia has fortified occupied lands with minefields and hardened fighting positions, which Ukraine has had a very difficult time penetrating. Aviation with long-range firepower could destroy these fortifications, says Andriy Zagorodnyuk, chairperson of Ukraine's Center for Defense Strategies. But will dozens of fighter jets that have been promised to Ukraine so far be enough? The F-16s are planned to be used alongside Soviet aircraft, like Su-24, Su-25 and MiG-29, says Ignat. Thus, he believes that 61 fighter jets that Ukraine will receive from the Netherlands and Denmark would already be enough to make a big difference on the battlefield. Yet there are still several issues, writes Professor Justin Bronk, a senior researcher from the Royal United Services Institute. Among them is maintenance of the fighter jets, which are likely quite old, according to Bronk. Just like any other flight management system customer that the US has helped set up with an F-16 fleet, there will be a heavy reliance on civilian contractors to supervise and provide on-the-job training to Ukrainian maintainers in-country, even after months of initial training. It will also take a lot of time to train Ukrainian pilots as formation leaders to execute certain tactics necessary for the F-16s to operate effectively near the front line, Braun cries. And apart from that, the success of the F-16 F fleet heavily depends on the provision of other weapons, including the AIM-120D advanced medium-range air-to-air missile and JASM joint air-to-surface standoff missile, writes Braun. But these weapons are yet to be approved.